What's up everybody? Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Today is Friday, September 1st. Welcome to this week's video update. Uh, a couple announcements. One, Monday is Labor Day, if you didn't know. We, uh, we will not be doing our live broadcast Monday morning like we normally do. So have a great long weekend, relax, uh, spend some good time with your family and uh, come back refreshed and ready to trade on Tuesday. Second, uh, don't forget, if you haven't already entered, make sure you, if you're in your members area here, click on the learn more button for your chance to win a chance to trade our $50,000 account. Just simply click on that button. It'll take you to the page, which is navigationtrading.com forward slash contest. You have exactly 13 days, seven hours, 48 minutes, and 16 seconds at the time of this recording to, uh, to check it out. Get the rules and everything on here, a video that goes over more about the contest, and then you can just go to the application and apply. So if you're interested, check that out. Let's, uh, let's jump into the alerts for this week. So if we go back to the first trade we made of the week, was in TLT. So this was a, a calendar spread that we put on in TLT. So if we take a look at the chart, uh, when we put this on, implied volatility rank in IV percentiles around 10 to 12. Had a nice push up there, uh, but then today uh, it just collapsed again. So we're, we're still well within our range. Uh, got a little bit of profit, but not enough to take off yet. Total risk on this trade is about 495 bucks, so 500 bucks. So we want we want about a hundred dollar profit uh, or more out of this one. So we'll continue to monitor TLT. The uh, next trade we put on was a closing adjusting trade in corn. So we closed out the call side. So price moved down, breached our downside break even, closed out our call side. So still holding the put vertical side in October and we've got a full iron condor in the November cycle. So if we take a look at corn, here's the, here's the full iron condor that we have on in November. No, no profit or loss yet there. And then our vertical, let me reset these real quick so I can uncheck them. The uh, vertical price is just inside of our range. We need a little bit of a price move up uh, to get out of that piece and then we'll continue to monitor the November iron condor as well. The, uh, the next trade we put on was in XLK. It was a closing trade, so we had a straddle on in there, booked over 25% of max profit in the trade for about 28 days. Uh, IV percentile at the time was still currently at 71. If we take a look at a chart of XLK now, uh, you can see implied volatility has, has dropped since then. So if we get a little bit of a pop back up next week in implied volatility, you may look to re-enter a position in XLK. But uh, nice trade there, nice profit. Then next trade was an opening trade in Apple. So we sold a strangle in Apple. IV percentile at that time was at 85. So if we take a look at a chart of Apple now, uh, it's about about 80 is the IV percentile. IV rank is 76, so still nice and high. Keep in mind, one of the reasons that implied volatility has stayed high even after the earnings announcement is because on September 12th, so 12 days from now, Apple is announcing the new iPhone. Okay, so uh, in anticipation of that announcement, uh, because of the uncertainty and anticipation around that, uh, that's why implied volatility is staying high. That's why options are staying expensive. So if we don't get out of the position before September 12th, just keep in mind, if we're still in this, uh, by the time September 12th rolls around, uh, there could be a decent move in Apple. You, you never know. One thing that we almost know for certain, not always, but uh, what, what, what we can anticipate is that this implied volatility will get crushed after they announce the new iPhone, you know, and, and how the market perceives it. Will they perceive it as good? Will they perceive it as, uh, you know, not so good? Then, uh, you know, that's gonna determine kind of what, what the price of Apple does, but, but what we almost know for certain is that the implied volatility is gonna get crushed, which is gonna help our position. So that's just, that's a decision that you're going to have to make. For me, if I'm in the position 
uh, come September 12th, I'm going to stay in. Uh, but you do you do need to make the determination: Are you do you want to take the risk of a, a major move in the stock, or do you want to get out of the trade before that announcement? Now we'll be sending out the alerts, so and I'll send out a reminder about that announcement. But uh, just to give you a heads up on the new iPhone announcement. Next trade was in GLD, so we opened an iron condor in GLD. IV percentile got up around. 57, which I mentioned is the highest point uh, for implied volatility in GLD since April of this year. Uh, so we will uh, put on a small position, may look to add to this if implied volatility expands or if we get a major price move. Right now, still very centered, got a little bit of profit. So if it stays right here, we'll just book that profit as it as it grows and uh, and move on. But we'll keep you keep you posted on GLD. We had a closing adjusting trade in wheat. So we, we actually closed one of our full iron condors in wheat, booked about 35% max profit on that piece of our position. Uh, the, remember, we've still got the, whole, the wheat position open uh, and we're just kind of collecting more credit, booking profits, uh, you know, adjusting mechanically to, to continue to work our way out of that one. So we're still holding the 440, 430 put vertical and the 475, 466 uh, put vertical as well. Now, uh, I'll show in a, in a later alert, and I'll go to the platform. We did end up adding another iron condor here a couple of alerts later, and I'll show you that here in just a second. But first, let's talk about Amazon. So we did a closing adjusting trade in Amazon where we closed out the put vertical of the iron condor. Uh, so we've, we've got the... Uh, so we closed out the remaining put vertical. So now we've just got the full iron condor in the October cycle. So if we take a look, here's what that looks like. So we made a profit on the other one and now we're still in this one. So just waiting for a little bit more profit before we take that one off. And then as I mentioned in wheat, uh, opening adjusting trade. So we added another iron condor in the November cycle and we're still holding the two put verticals. So let's take a look at wheat. Uh, had a nice move up today, which was much needed, about a, a point and a quarter uptick. So the 430, uh, 440 put vertical, you can see the price is right here. Still need a little bit more of an up move to, to benefit that piece. And then same thing with this one here, we need a, a big up move. Uh, but we've got, in October, we've still got 21 days to expiration. So got a lot of time. If we take a look at the charts, I mean, again, we've had just this massive one directional move. If we can just get a nice little move up into this area here, we'll be in good shape and we'll continue to potentially add positions, take them off, book those profits, eat away at that, uh, what's currently a losing position. Uh, but this is part of the game you gotta play when you get a, one, a huge one directional move. And then here's, uh, lastly, here's the uh, the full iron condor that we have on, obviously still very centered in that piece. So we'll continue to monitor and manage that. Next trade was a, and, and last trade was today, was a closing adjusting trade in soybeans. So we closed the remaining put vertical side of what was originally an iron condor. So we booked profits in that piece still holding a full iron condor in the October cycle and we'll look to potentially add another one in November uh, depending on, on what price does. But you can see price is hanging out up here. And uh, so I, I almost added one today, but I wanted to see a little bit more price move either, you know, you know potentially up before I added one on. Uh, but we'll probably do that sometime early next week depending on what price does. And we'll, and kind of like, kind of like uh, wheat, we're still in a little bit of a hole in our in our soybean position, so continue to be adding uh, credits and taking off profits to, uh, to 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 make that one a winner as well. So again, same kind of thing. Not bit not as big of a move, but a pretty decent one one directional move in soybeans. So working our way out of that one. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other current positions we have. We've got in the ES. We've got this vertical on still. We, we, we had a significant profit of about $600 after the big rally to the upside. Now we're right at about break even. But remember, 
The whole reason we have this position on is for that downside protection, to carry that short delta in our portfolio. When the markets just continue rallying up, these, these short delta positions are gonna put a little bit of a drag on our portfolio, but you've gotta keep these on for protection. So we'll continue to, uh, continue to keep that on. And then also in the ES uh, futures, we've got an iron condor. Price is right here. Uh, so still well within our range. Need a little bit of a move down and, and a volatility contraction to benefit that. I mentioned corn, soybean, wheat, apple, uh, Amazon, BABA. So I've got a couple of questions about this one. You know, Alibaba is not on our standard watch list. However, and, and primarily due because due to the fact that they a lot of times they'll have like 10 point wide strikes. Now they narrowed them down to five at this point and the liquidity is really good. And, and, and so the, the risk reward just, just uh, worked out nicely to put this trade on. We had still high, you know, over 50 implied volatility percentile after the earnings announcement. So we didn't have any earnings or dividends or anything to worry about. So it made sense to put this on. Still well within our range, nice and centered, looking for a little bit more profit to book in BABA. DIA, another short directional position uh, with the price move up. We're a little bit out of our range here, so need a little bit of, of price move down in DIA to benefit that piece. Uh, same thing in FXE, need a little bit of a down move. The Euro continues to be pretty strong. Got a little bit of selling uh, the, 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 this week but need a little bit more to benefit that position. Uh, and we've got, how many days do we have left in that one? We've got 14, so either next week or possibly the week after, depending on what price does, we will look to potentially either, if we, if we get in range, get in profit, we'll, we'll go ahead and book that obviously, but if we, if we need to roll that one uh, in the, in the uh, week leading up to expiration, we will look to do that as well. GLD, I mentioned that. We've got the iron condor. Q's, we've got an iron condor in the Q's as well. And uh, you can see still nice, well within our range, but need a little bit of a move down in the Q's to benefit there. TLT and then XRT. So we've got two positions on in XRT, first of which is an adjusted, uh, slightly uh, inverted strangle. No, excuse me, not inverted, but uh, an adjusted strangle, 38, 39. Uh, price is starting to move a little bit higher. Uh, and, and so price is right here. So if we if it continues higher next week, we'll make an adjustment by not only rolling the puts up, but also taking the entire position out to October. Uh, I, I was trying to get filled on a roll out to October earlier this week, didn't get filled. We've got 14 days left in that. I like to roll when there's you know at least a couple, two, three weeks left didn't get filled and, and prices moved up on us, but we will we'll look to potentially roll that next week. Or if we get a sharp move down, uh, we may just take that off and then continue to manage our October piece, uh, which, is, which is nice and centered and, and, and getting, some, getting some profit going there. So those are all the current positions. Uh, lastly, I wanna mention the closed trade since it is September 1st, another month is in the books. So if we take a look at all of our closed positions in August, we had 12 closed positions, all profitable, uh, which is a, a, you know great, again, just booking those winners, taking them off at a percent of max profit. So another good month for those closing trades. And so 12, trade, 12 closed trades, 12 winners for a total profit of 1,000. Six hundred and eighty-nine dollars and fifty cents. Okay, so uh, took some nice profits out of those trades, and uh, and so we we continue to book those winners. Now you know again we've we've got a couple pieces in in soybeans and wheat that we're working our way out of, but that just means we're going to be in the trade for long for longer duration. Uh, you know you wish you could just you know, book the winners and uh, put them on and take them off uh, without any adjustments, but that's not the case. You know, if you look at uh, our GLD calendar spread, we had to make adjustments, ended up working our way out of that for profit. Uh, the Spy Iron Condor had an adjustment, worked that out for a profit. XOP Strangle had to do an adjustment there and roll that, worked that out for a profit. Uh, so, so they're not all easy, just put them on and take them off, 
But if you stay mechanical and continue to uh, adjust and roll as needed, uh, it's the most consistent way to make money in this market. So hope that was helpful. Everybody have a great weekend and we will see you next week. Start with trading on Tuesday. Take care.